So I'm a huge fan of kayak bass fishing. I love the, the adventure and the chase of, of launching your kayak on a small body of water, a river, a creek, or a stream, and just it's just you in the water. There's no fast boats, there's no trolling motors, it is just you, your paddle, and your adventure to try to catch as many bass as possible. And so in today's video, I wanted to make it my goal to tell you guys kind of my thought process, what goes into my head when I'm planning a kayak trip. So I get to the lake, what gear do I take with me in order to have the most successful day on the water possible. My name is Tyler Anderson and let's talk about it. So this is my kayak right here. Well, I mean, actually, technically not my kayak. My kayak's on the trailer over there, the Bonafide SS-127. This here is actually the Angler giveaway kayak that I'm giving away to Samuel, who won that giveaway a few months ago. We just haven't been able to uh, get our plans together yet, so I wanted to take it out for a little test run. But this is my general kayak right here. It's got storage up front, storage in the middle, storage under your seat, and some custom storage I added back here. So I want to explain to you guys everything that I bring with me when it comes to kayak fishing in any body of water. And of course, I want to apply it to all of y'all's body of water waters as well and also your different types of kayaks because I understand that not everybody has the same type of kayak so let me uh, get the camera closer and we'll talk about it. So the first thing, of course, you want to make sure you have the right amount of, of equipment and gear. So you want to make sure you have a life jacket either in the boat or on your body. You want to make sure you have your paddle a good paddle, I use a bending branches paddle. Uh, and then of course you wanna make sure you have everything necessary for a public body of water that, to keep you legal. So I think on a kayak you gotta have a, a flag, a lighting system, um, I'm sure some kind of flares. I don't normally fish with kayaks on public water, but make sure you guys have everything you need to be, to be legal before you worry about the fishing gear. So of course, make sure you guys have that first. So moving on from that, the most important thing and the biggest question that I get is how many rods are proper to bring on a kayak? And of course, this depends fully on the size and storage capabilities of your kayak. So I'm gonna go over what I bring on my kayaks, the Bonafide SS107 or 127. But uh, it's pretty simple for me. I max myself out at five rods, usually four. And you may be thinking to yourself, five rods in a kayak, that's a lot. Well, I have found that, that four to five is really the best in terms of, uh, of my situation. So as a tournament bass guy, I love being able to bring as many rods as possible, not have to retie, be, be ready for any sort of situation. And so on my bass boat, I have like 12 to 14 rods that I use all the time, but in a kayak, I just can't fit that. So what are the rods that I bring that are kind of what I would call all purpose rods? And that's really what they are. They are fully all purpose for all of them. I don't really have any, any specialized technique rod in here. I want rods that are kind of broad in terms of, of their scope, but also fit within different scopes. So I have, I have smaller all-purpose, bigger all-purpose, more kind of crankbait all-purpose, but I wanna make sure that lures can be thrown on basically all of these rods, uh, depending on the situation that we have out there on the water. So the first thing I do before I choose which four or five rods to take with me, I'm gonna look at the pond. So I get here, I walk the shore, I throw the drone up in the air like I did today, and I see, is it shallow, is it deep, or is, is the whole thing kind of the same contour, is it different? I wanna make sure that I understand my body of water before I make the decision for which rods and reels to bring out there. And today, I saw this pond, decently clear water, but not every part was super clear. You had relatively shallow for the majority of it. You have plenty of aquatic vegetation, looks like it covers the entire pond. And lastly, at least when it comes to kayak fishing, we are dealing with some pretty windy conditions today. So the first rod combo that I'm gonna bring is going to be a topwater combo. It is fall here in Texas, the fish should be eating topwater, and so I have a, a plopper here on this rod. It is a 7.6 heavy, so in case I wanted to throw a frog up shallow and really winch those fish out of heavy cover, I have that 7.6 heavy. Really though, any topwater combo that you guys like to throw, make sure you have a topwater combo with braid at almost all times, unless of course you know your fish are not in the mood to buy topwater. Let's say it's winter, or let's say those fish are, whatever, there's not in the topwater mood. You can switch out your topwater combo for something else. Uh, subsurface but the fish today could potentially eat top water so top water combo is going to be number one now of course on that top water combo I can throw all sorts of types of top waters I can throw swim baits bigger glide baits on that combo and that's kind of my biggest all-purpose combo now working our way down we have kind of an all-purpose moving bait combo this here is the uh, the old-fashioned uh, that's no longer made lose custom speed stick magnum rattle trap rod 
it's a 7.6 medium heavy and honestly it's more of it says medium heavy and I kind of believe them and it says a fast action I don't believe that this is more like a moderate action and I've fallen in love with this rod I use it for everything and I've probably got to go on Amazon and buy a few of these that are left because I don't think Luz makes this rod anymore uh, but really any all-purpose moving bait so I'd recommend a 7.2 to 7.6 medium heavy or medium action rod kind of a stiffer crankbait rod I would say is good for your chatter baits spinner baits crank baits uh, buzz baits smaller swim baits like a flashy swimmer or a, uh, a 4.8 inch uh, Rage Swimmer is really the best for all purpose moving and that's what I have on this rod right here. Depending on your water clarity, you either want 15 or 17 pound fluorocarbon or braided line. And because I was fishing a dirty pond last time I fished with this combo, I have braided line. It is a little bit too clear in here today for braided line, but I think we're still going to be able to catch some fish on it. So that is my moving bait combo. Next, I'm going to have a Texas rig weightless soft plastic combo, and that's going to be uh, usually a 7.2 medium heavy. Today I've got a 7.2 medium because I, I, I figured the fish would probably be eating a fluke with some 15 pound, is that 15? Yeah, 15 pound fluorocarbon right here uh, with of course a, a weightless Texas rig wide gap hook here. And I use this for everything. You can throw rattle traps on this. This is really the all purpose rod here. It's just not as best for, for spinner baits and, uh, and chatter baits as that more moderate action tipped rod is. So that's what I have for rod number three. And then rod number four that I use is usually a spinning rod. I'm a big advocate of throwing small finesse lures in ponds, but because I saw how shallow this pond was, how windy it was, and how much aquatic vegetation it had, I figured that those first three are probably going to be the ones that catch me the majority of the fish. So I have a spinning rod here. It is usually a seven foot medium. I'm a huge believer in seven foot medium. Again, it's an all purpose spinning rod. You can throw anything from a shaky head to a drop shot to a, uh, a jerk bait or even a Texas rig on a seven foot medium. I utilize this spinning rod a whole lot when it comes to my pond fishing adventures so that usually makes it four but because I'm going to leave the spinning rod at home for today's adventures as you'll see I'm actually going to bring a specialty rod and a specialty combo is really something that you're probably not going to throw a whole lot but you know there might be a situation in your lake today on this kayak uh, that you have an opportunity to throw this and probably catch a very niche bass so this here is an eight inch swim bait here the eight inch mag draft i know that if we get to any clear water areas that are a little bit deeper don't have as much vegetation you know to the top of the water fish just chow this in this weather right here cloudy windy water temperature is kind of in that in that 60 70 that's when fish absolutely chomp this thing right here similar to the spawn pre-spawn bite for big swim baits they also eat it well in the fall so i'm not going to throw this a whole lot today but it definitely deserves a place in my kayak and so like I said, those are the four rods that I have. Today, they are four bait casters. Occasionally, if I'm fishing a pond that's more deep, clear water, I'll bring two bait casters and two spinning rods because I'll have a feeling that in order to catch fish, I'll probably throw more finesse tactics. But today, like I said, it's all about knowing your body of water. And as soon as you know it, you know exactly which rods to bring every single time. Now, you at home might not have as much room in your kayak as I do. Let's say you're in a small, eight to ten foot sit in kayak and you only have room for two rods i would recommend bringing of course understanding your body of water and bringing two rods either two bait casters or a bait caster and a spinning in that case i would go with a general all-purpose texas rig soft plastic worm rod and then an all-purpose moving bait rod and just you're gonna have to be okay with not having uh, any sort of rod that's best for finesse any other rod that's best for top water and big baits you're gonna have to pick and choose based on the storage that you have and luckily in in this boat here I have a lot of storage I can fit three rods back here on the tackle storage and I can have one or two rods sitting here at my feet so that is going to be it for the uh, rod portion of the video we're gonna put the rods in the kayak and talk about tackle so hopefully you guys can see this here from this angle I have I think this is made by yak attack it is a uh, pretty sturdy plastic bin to hold all of my tackle and it's secured down by a strap and so when I'm on the water I carry two tackle boxes and one soft plastic bag. So I'm gonna bring out the first box here being my basically general pond box. So like you guys saw in some of the pond videos I've made, I like to put all of my hard baits, 
uh, and, and, and terminal tackle for pond fishing into one all-purpose box like this one is here. And so in this box, let me just move these rods. What the heck am I doing? Uh, we have a box here that has basically everything hard bait in it. So I've got square bow crankbaits, buzz baits, poppers, lipless crankbaits, frogs, jerk baits, glide baits, and of course a bunch of jigs. And when it comes to pond fishing, I also have a divider in here for my terminal tackle. My weights, my hooks, my swivels, my bobber stoppers, that kind of thing. But because I'm in a kayak, I have a little bit more access to storage. So I'm gonna have still one box like this of all my lures that I could potentially need for, for moving, for hard baits, jigs, that kind of thing. But I also bring my terminal tackle box. And the reason for that is because there's been way too many times where I go out in the water, especially in the northern country, and I lose all of my hooks to pike, I snag all of my hooks and I can't get them back, and so I'm stuck throwing a lure, let's say a crankbait, when they were biting a Texas rig so well, but I lost all of my ter terminal tackle. So I like to bring all of my terminal tackle with me, that way I'm ready and set for any situation possible. And that leaves one more thing, and that is, my soft plastics. I have here my Bassmaster membership bag. I've used this thing for soft plastics for years. I basically just signed up for Bassmaster to get this bag. <laughs> and in it, I keep, of course, my Kinect scale to weigh the big fish that I catch inevitably every single time because I'm the best. In the front pocket, I usually keep scissors, uh, pliers, anything like that. And then in the middle pocket, I keep all the soft plastics that I might need on the water. Like I said, you don't have to bring a whole lot of soft plastics. You don't, you don't need three bags full of stuff like this because the whole goal is to get to know your body of water. And so walk the bank, fly a drone if you have it, uh, check out Google Earth pictures. You can probably pack a bag based on doing research without having to shove a whole lot of stuff. So I've got, I've got craws, I've got cinkos, I've got flukes, uh, I've got some finesse worms and a few other niche soft plastics. But most of the stuff that I use even on lakes on a daily basis can fit into this bag right here. And all three of these stack nicely within this box. Just like that, close it up and we are ready folks to hit the water. Let's get these rods in here, launch the kayak, and get on the water for an awesome day. Today we are at a private water fishing lake. I usually don't like to fish PWF lakes uh, too often here on the channel because I love fishing public water, but I happen to be in the area twice in one week to fish a PWF lake. So what PWF is, is a private uh, membership in Texas and Oklahoma that you guys can join. And the draw of PWF is you get to fish lakes like the one you see behind me and you saw on that drone shot by yourself. Nobody else is out here. It is a private water experience, and most of the time the fishing is really, really good and super fun. But make no mistake, it is not always easy to catch fish on private water. I hate when people say that fishing private water is like shooting fish in a barrel because I can guarantee you, on a day like today with these conditions and uh, how vast this place is, I can imagine we're still gonna have to work to catch these fish. But if you guys wanna check out PWF, I will have it linked below. The lake that I'm at today is, uh, let me pull up the email here. It is Blue Bonnet Ridge Lake in Ennis, uh, which is about an hour southeast of, of, of kind of North Dallas area. So I guess the DFW Metroplex is probably an hour to an hour and a half away from anywhere in that area. And it's a, a super cool lake, awesome, beautiful property, and I'm excited to get out there. So let's launch the kayak, have an awesome day fishing, and we'll see you guys out there. Good thing about the bona fides is that they are very stable. So I can do that and not tempt the kayak. That's pretty insane. Again, from at least what I can see, this is a relatively shallow lake. And so spinnerbait, shatterbait, Senko, I think is what's gonna get it done. But if not, we've got some other alternatives. And also if it gets deeper, I mean, it's almost, you know, middle of fall here in Texas. We had one of our few cold fronts we have a year here. We had it this weekend. That's why it's still blowing and windy. So if the audio is bad, I apologize. But if we find any deeper spots, I guarantee you a drop shot is going to catch them. So I'll go back to the truck and get the, uh, the spinning rod. There's one. There's one on the old spin, on the old spinner bite. Is it big? Is it big? I don't know. But it's taking me on a journey. Oh, it's not a bad one. It's not a bad one. Wow. Hello, buddy. You want to chill? You want to chill? Ooh, hoo, hoo. yes. There we go. Bring it on up in here. Got him on the spinner bait. Don't usually like to throw braid on a spinner bait just because it has a tendency to bend it out. But as long as you set the hook uh, pretty soft, it doesn't bend it out. Look at that fish right there. Gorgeous. Two and a half pounds or so. Pretty, pretty dang healthy. I'd like to see him be a little more fat, but you know what? 
I will take him. Thank you, sir. Gosh, these fish are following the spinnerbait, but not eating it. I've had two fish now literally follow the spinnerbait all the way to the boat and not eat it. So it makes me think they're not really in a chasing mood. If it happens once, it's a coincidence. If it happens twice, it's probably, uh, probably a pattern. So I'm gonna change from the spinnerbait here in a few minutes. I do like throwing it though, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with it a little bit. But really that's a dumb mentality to have, especially in a, if, if I was in a tournament situation and I had two fish follow me to the boat and not eat it, I would switch right away. But I got no time rush. I'm just out of here having a good time. I kind of want to catch fish on a spinnerbait. But that is bad. Don't follow my lead there, especially if you're a tournament angler. But I still want to throw a reaction bait. I don't want to throw a Cinco yet. Well, because it's, it's windy. Like, I want to throw something reactionary. So I'm going to open up my handy dandy thing. What can I, th I mean, I could throw a fluke, I guess. A belly weighted fluke, but I just made a video about that. That's one thing y'all are gonna understand if you watch my channel for a while. That in bass fishing, certain things just work all the time, and the belly weighted fluke is one of those. So, uh, gosh dang it. Dang it. Dang it. It's a fish. I've got a fish on. Whoa! I foul hooked a, what the heck? I was coming over here to get my bait unstuck from whatever it was, a, a, stat, a tree, a bush, a piece of grass, and I get over here, and look at this, folks. Look at this. <sighs> wow. Look at the grass off this so y'all can see. I foul hooked a bass right in the belly. Belly bass. Sorry, buddy. Probably just put you through some major pain. What a weird turn of events, man. Hey, we went though from not catching these fish to getting less bites for sure, but the fluke got the fish in the boat. Even if it didn't even eat the lure, I just foul hooked it in the booty hole. There's one, finally. Gosh, that dude chased it down too. Had to keep covering water and finally, we got ourselves a nice one on the fluke. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bring it in here. Bring it in. These are the kind of fish that have been chasing me on the spinnerbait all day. And, oh, he's barely hooked. He's barely hooked. Bring it in here. Yes, sir. Yeah. Look at that thing right there. That is a chunky, dunky bass. Probably around three, three and a quarter pounds. Beautiful fish. Look at how fat and healthy. That fish is, and I just had to get up in some shallow water and really cover a lot of water with this thing. And I knew the fish would eat something moving, and so that's why I was twitching the, uh, the fluke relatively fast. It just had to give them that time of the bait to slow for them to kind of commit to it, and the spinner bait, the swim jig, never gave, it, gave, never gave the fish that time, and uh, the fluke does, so that's awesome. See ya, buddy. Yes, ma'am, and yes, sir. Still slow, though. You know, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of people think that private water lakes are like super easy to catch fish in. That's, that's not the case all the time. This this little, I don't know, 40-acre lake here, I mean, it's, it's fishing like a real lake would. The fish are setting up in certain distinct areas. They're all eating a lure the same across the pond, as in they're not eating a spinnerbait well and you really have to dissect certain areas to, to catch fish. The draw of private water fishing is that you get to, of course, fish by yourself, which is very great. Not worrying about other, other people stealing your spots. So, there's one. They are little squirts loaded in this corner, but they're fun. They're fun little guys. Thank you, buddy. There's one. I knew it. I knew it. They are stacked at the mouth of this little pocket here. Got them. Thank you, buddy. Fish number, I don't know, four or five for today. All we gotta do is keep ourselves anchored down in this little area. And I think we're gonna catch some fish. 